Are you ready to go below the surface? Behind, I forgot what the hell she wrote. Have you ever wondered how many samples we travel with in our trunks? They're really bad. It's just called 10 questions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here today, Wednesday, May 24th. We're going to do a little uh, episode of 10 questions you may have seen before with uh, Mr. Joe Blodgett, Mr. Kevin Jablon, Kevin Jablon, Scott Cucci. Soon to come will be uh, Chuck Scalacci and Scott Cucci. And uh, I get the privilege of asking my friend and co-worker, Mr. Michael Blasek, uh, some 10 questions. Michael, how the heck are you, bud? I'm pretty good. It's a beautiful spring day here in Bel Air, and uh, I get to see all you guys' beautiful faces at uh, headquarters. And now we're in this awesome podcast studio that Kevin created, so uh, it's the first time I was able to use it. So it's good. It's, it's good, awesome. Good. It's awesome. It is pretty cool. So uh, Mike Blasick joined Spartan Services in 2012. Uh, like I said, I consider him a friend outside of work. He is uh, VP of sales. He's been paramount in... Um, getting our footprint from coast to coast, Canada to Mexico. Let's jump right into it, Michael. All okay. right, here we go. Here we I go. am going to occasionally have to scroll my phone up because I have them on my phone. I wasn't smart enough to write them down. The first question, Mr. Blasic, what do you enjoy most about working at Spartan Services? The one thing that I put as a trailer after the question is nobody leaves Spartan Services willingly. I mean, um, I can count on two hands since I joined in 2011, the amount of people that have resigned and, and gone elsewhere. And uh, I'd just love to know, what, what do you enjoy most about working at Spartan Surfaces? One of the most things I enjoy about working at Spartan Surfaces is the fact that other, but everybody else loves working here. Right. It is true. It is nice when you work in a happy place. Yeah. So it, it's, it, it's, it's, recipro you know, it's reciprocated amongst the group. Right. And I always say like, you know, um, you know, in our company, sometimes people copy so many people on emails and I, I, you know, and I understand why, but one of the coolest things is, and also sometimes a detriment is because all of a sudden, all those five people drop everything they're doing and they immediately start working at it for somebody else. Sure. So there's pros and cons to that, right? <laughs> but that's, that's just the culture we have here. Um, you know, I think there's two parts to this because, you know, when I when I first started the Midwest team out there, you know, the, the you know, the anonymity that I was giving by Kevin to, you know, basically run my own business sure. was awesome. Right. So and I, I would you know, it's really hard for a lot of entrepreneurs like to really, you know, allow people to kind of be themselves. They want to have a tight rein on everything. And I think what we found out later on that he's very happy delegating that to people he trusts and that meant a lot that he trusted me, right? So, you know, that part of it. I think the um, the biggest and probably the, the neatest thing about working in this company is the freedom to be yourself, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so like everybody, and we, we have, you know, reps that probably start at 10 and like probably, you know, are out till four in the morning, right? right. And their process is their process, right? Sure. And then we have some reps that probably start at five in the morning and are home in with the kids by 5 p.m. Sure. We don't really care unless you get the job done, Absolutely. right? And and, that, and I think that's cool. <laughs> and from, from I would say, a sales leader perspective, I, I, I encourage it because, I mean, people have their own process. And, Absolutely. And, and, and if you're in a company that's trying to put everybody in the same <laughs> box, then, you know, that's, I don't think you're going to be a successful and I think your attrition rates can be higher right I think people no like question. to be you know uh, and these organizations allow them the freedom to you know express and to you know uh, operate on their own you know on their own systems absolutely like I said that was literally the the crux of the question right what do you love best right there's no two answers maybe that'll be the same so uh, one thing I would also like to do is throw Mike some props here I was actually out there and had the privilege of going to Pearl Jam in 2016 That's right. with Mike showed me around of uh, uh, Chicago got to check out uh, Wrigleyville and um, Got to experience an awesome concert, but it was at that time got to see the beginning of the Chicago showroom that you were uh, put in charge of, of, of uh, you know, getting up off the ground and whatnot. So kudos to you because you did. You got the reins and you ran with them and, and it's a thriving territory right now, Mike. So props to you, buddy. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Michael. Did you have... So this is different nowadays because with... All the different outlets, right? Hulu, all the different apps, YouTube TV, blah, 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 blah. There is so much content on TV. Oh, God. It's not apropos for now, right? But growing up, so I was born in 72. I know that you're considerably younger than I am, but you also grew up. 78. 
Okay, well, it's still six. I'll take six hey, years. Hey, we're, we're, we're the X generation. We, no, nobody even talks about us. No, they we, do not. We, we fly right under the wire. <laughs> we do fly under yeah. the wire. <laughs> so, remember growing up, uh, there was cable, right? Like, yeah. I, I, there wasn't like two, four, five, seven, nine, and 11, and 13, but there was cable, right? There wasn't that much content. MTV. So, <laughs> so, from, I'm trying to remember what time they started, maybe eight, nine o'clock in the morning until roughly around 10, and then again on the evening, there were game shows. Yep. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Now you could also pick an evening game show like Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune. You could pick one in the morning like Price is Right and Sale of the Century. And, you know, uh, what was the one with no wham, you know, uh, Pressure Luck. Did you have a favorite game show growing up? Well, you took, yeah, you already stole it, right? So I, 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 you know, I looked at Jeopardy as a young kid and it was like, I mean, I, I, I try to answer them. But yeah, I, I was so happy was like, if I got like one yeah, answer. Yeah, one, one answer, right? <laughs> now I get six, uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> out of four shows in a row. Um, which, by the way, I'd give a shout out to my wife. Uh, she is like one of the most amazing uh, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, oh. she, I, 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 I'm stumped every they time. They turn two like, letters and she guesses yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things. I'm like, you got to go on this thing. I, I actually <laughs> might be trying to you know, uh, register for that because she's that good. But really? Yeah, she's that good. So uh, you don't want to play against her for that. But um, <laughs> So when I was younger, younger though, the, you know, the pressure luck thing, because it was a whammy, right? Oh, I was, was, I was like, This guy, the little cartoon was on that thing. And they come up and dance in front of you? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but no, no, no. I, I think the yeah, price is right was always it, right? Because I, I was, you know, I was, I felt I was good at like guessing the prices. Sure. And then, you know, the, was the, the, the grand prize showdown. The, the showcase showdown. Show, the showcase showdown. Yeah. Big wheel. Yeah. And who doesn't like Bob Barker? Everybody loved Bob Barker. Yeah. He always had that unique microphone. Yeah. Little he was skinny like six mic. feet tall. Yeah. Little skinny <laughs> mic. He was taller than me probably. He had Holly, yeah. had Janice, whoever the hell else was doing the thing there. Yeah. So yeah. Well, then, I, remember, I remember, so would that be the game show that you would want to host? Cause that's what I would, uh, that would be the, the, the part B to this question. Which game show would you have liked to host? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Hollywood squares would be fun. I forgot about Hollywood Squares. Yeah, Hollywood Squares would be fun because you have, uh, it wasn't my favorite, but I did watch it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, and it had all those like comedians on it, yes. personalities on yes. it, so it'd be this good banter back and 100%. forth. 100%. Yeah, so I think I think Hollywood Squares would be a good one. Very, yeah. very cool. <laughs> very cool. I was always a big sale of the century. Uh, sale of the century? Sale of the century. It's going back. It's yeah. going way back, but... Uh, that, that might be the, f uh, the few years difference between <laughs> us. <laughs> So next one, I've also had the privilege of meeting Mike's wife, Jen, um, sweetheart of a lady, awesome mom, and uh, got to spend some time a few times. And I'm curious, where did you meet your wife, and when did you know that Jennifer was the, was the one? Well, I mean, that's this is this is probably a little bit longer story than you'd probably like to hear about. But well, since um, since Chris told me before we jumped on air, we're on a timer on this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give us the cliff I'll, notes. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, I'll, I'll give you the cliff notes. So I will say, my, my if you know by by um, my own admission, my wife, I outkicked my coverage, right? Like, and if you see her, you'd be like, a lot of people say that. In my my wife is a very beautiful lady. She's a very attractive woman, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you listen, um, and if you know me, uh, because of that sort Handsome of Handsome man right across yeah, the yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, you know, it, it had to wear it down a little bit. Just like if, there, <laughs> if there's a good rep out there that don't want to work for us, it may take me a year, but I'll make that, I'll make it happen, right? <laughs> but uh, for her, uh, that, that was the case. So it was, it was probably uh, 10 years in the making, to be honest, because I was, uh, she was at my uh, college uh, for a very short period of time. But I remember being there as a freshman, she was a sophomore, and her and these two other, um, uh, you know, her girlfriends at the time walked in this bar door, and it, it, to me it was like this, you know, dream maker sort of moment where there was light behind her and her hair was going back, and I was like, I was like, who, who is that? And then that was the last time I saw her, right? So fast forward, you know, 10 years, I had a boat on Lake Michigan for about a decade, and I remember her friends at the time uh, became our good friends even after she left college and they were all hanging out in my boat and I was literally walking down from the bow uh, to the you know uh, to the stern of the boat and I stopped and I looked at Christy uh, one of our friends and I said hey what about that girl Jen where's she at right now he, she goes well uh, she's at the start of the boat yeah <laughs> I was like I was like Is she, well she just she just broke up with her boyfriend I'm like you got to get her down here <laughs> and that was it that we eventually sort of went to a wedding for the first time together it was almost <laughs> like our first date and uh here we are, 15 years later. Very cool, man. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. an awesome story, Glenn. Yeah. This is very, this is something that, you know, you and I chatted for a few minutes before we got on the air. What do you enjoy the most about being a dad? You know, it's, it, you know, 
again, this was something that was uh, something that I, I didn't, I was surprised at, right? Because I, I felt like when the idea of kids for me, I was like, man, it, I'll be there when they turn six, I'll take over, right? Like, <laughs> you know, cause I didn't think the baby thing was for me, but the most surprising thing for me about being a dad was, you know, the early years, how precious that was. Oh God, yeah. And I didn't, you know, it touched me, right? But that stage for me, I think was a little bit uh, more precious than I, you know, caught me by surprise, sure. to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, probably this didn't turn into different personalities personalities. If you meet my kids, they are uh, exactly how I was when I was a little crazy, bouncing off the walls, They're, but they have big personalities. So just to see the development of the personality is probably the It you know, really the best is cool. Yeah. It's, it's a lot yeah. of fun watching them change and yeah, just become who they are. And it is, uh, it is, it's probably the most rewarding thing in the world. Well, I'll give you a story. So um, COVID hits and my son was... Tough time for the kids, man, during oh, COVID, bro. Yeah. It was brutal. Well, my, my youngest has a problem since still, like I, like almost every five-year-old, right? So my wife is trying to get my, you know, my uh, nine-year-old on the, uh, the the Zoom at the time to try to do his thing, sure. right? And she goes, switches to this, uh, this uh, nine-year-old, sorry. And she comes back. And my son, who's again five at the time, has his pants down in front of the Zoom camera, play, play, playing the skin banjo, if you know what I mean. And she's like mortified through the whole process. But I can't imagine there's probably tons of uh, of examples of that. So anyway, yeah. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, I mean, listen, hey, it was COVID was a tough time for everybody, boy. It was a tough time for everybody. And you know what? Is as uh, as embarrassing as that must have been for Jen, you both had to laugh. I told that story <laughs> like a million times. You. Yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, that is funny. All right, so let's see. So my next question is a favorite question. I mean, I'm going to combine two favorites in a row. Sure, sure. Um, what is your favorite book, if you have one? And um, do you have a favorite color? I have both, and um, I'm curious as to what yours are, if you have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well... So there's, again, there's two parts to this. So my favorite book uh, growing up was, I remember going through one of those book fairs at school and uh, I saw this big like skeleton of, you know, a T-Rex and I was like, I want that. It was Jurassic Park, right? Cool. And it was before Jurassic Park even had a movie. It wasn't even, it was like, you know, uh, Michael Crichton's like, you know, first I would, he had a bunch of bestsellers before that, but I would think that was the one that kind of, and I, so I read it and again, it was a little bit over my head at the time because of you know my age. But I remember I was like, man, it would be amazing if this could be turned into a movie. And then like a few years later, I was like, there's no way they can figure this out. If you really think about the book and what they were able to do with CGI and stuff. But that was good. Um, I would say as I grew up, I'd love to give you some you know amazing business book and sound all smart or whatever. But there's, there's a book that I would say influenced me quite a bit um, growing up. And it, it, it was probably in my uh, late teens and I reread it in probably my early 20s was a, a book um, by Miss um, Rand called uh, Fountainhead. And Fountainhead is, it, it is a, I mean, it's like the Iliad and the Odyssey. It's a long book, but it actually involves, you know, the growing up of architecture and what it was like back in the day. And there's a whole, there's like 15 subplots and it, and it you have to muscle through it a little bit, but it was, it, it's just a really cool book. And, you know, if anybody likes to have a long read, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it was almost like an accomplishment to be able to finish this thing. <laughs> it's like reading a uh, crime and punishment. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that, they're not, that, that's not the, probably the sexiest of two picks, but those are, those are my favorite. Favorites. And what yeah. about your color? Uh, green. So um, even though my na last name is Blasic, um, you know, my, my family has, uh, you know, a huge part of my family's Irish, right? So they're like the typ typical Irish American family that you go to everybody's house and they have all the Irish trinkets everywhere sure. and everything's green or whatever. So I couldn't even help myself. But <laughs> and, and St. Patty's Day is a really big, uh, you know, thing in my family because we are my family where I grew up is in Peoria. The majority of them are there. I have like 30 first cousins plus. Uh, but uh, a lot of my family owns bars and restaurants, right? And sure. I Irish pubs. Like my brother owns uh, Sullivan's. I love a good Irish pub, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The food, the beer, I love them. Yeah, dude. Very and cool. So we, we go in the uh, St. Patty's Day Parade in force no, normally. Some years bigger than others, but we'll have 100 plus people uh, walking in the parade. And uh, Peoria celebrates it on St. Patty's Day every single year, actually on the day. And it's a very, there's a big Irish community. And if you're not Irish, you, uh, you know, you identify as one for the day there. <laughs> so Kiss the, me, the, I'm Irish. Yeah, it'll be on a Monday and there'll be thousands of people at this parade throwing That's confetti awesome. and stuff. So yeah, green for that reason is my favorite color. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I can't believe I'm 51 years old, but as you get older, I personally did not think about a bucket list when I was 25, right? I'm 51. I got one. What's number one on your bucket list? If you have one, I do. Um, you know, 
You know, <laughs> it, it, you caught me you off guard. Me you can give me two if, if it's a tie. Yeah, I mean, listen, I I always hoped, when, especially when I, um, you know, had these two boys, was that one day that they would both be into golf, right? Sure. And I thought I could be like, a, you know, at an old age, you know, in my 70s, and, you know, something I can do with them, no right? Question. And it didn't matter where. No question. Right? So I, it, I'm hoping the same thing with me and my son, Mike, yeah, so you're not alone. Yeah, yeah, because I think there's a couple things you could do with your kids that, you know, you get your full attention, right? And it could be just get on a boat. And, and it's have four no, hours right? of quality time together, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's just you three. This is Exactly. It's just, just us, no right? No question. And, uh, and, and listen, my, my wife wants to come along. Absolutely. She's not, she's not a big golfer. Absolutely. Right, but, um, but you know, there's two things you could do. And, the, you know, the... You know, one thing is that you get them on a boat because they can't leave. You know, with the kids. <laughs> That's not my thing. Uh, I had a boat for a decade. It's the best day you sell is uh, or buy is a great yes. day, and the you know the also the best day is when you sell it kind of thing. Yeah, the easiest I'm, I'm, part I'm, about buying a boat is buying a boat. Yeah, that's right. And so I'm I'm done with the boat thing. But you know, just to understand or, and know that in the future that I, I could have that a few times a year that time with them. Absolutely. That that would be awesome. So I hope they both take it up, but I won't force it upon them, of course. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't know if this is ever going to be true, but as you can say, my a couple of my favorite uh, you know things to do. One of them is 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 golf, and I would love to get on Augusta. Uh, that is a big that, about, that, that would be cool. That you know that that I don't know if that that's a fantasy. Dude, I don't it's know a that, bucket list, yeah, yeah, right? It's a, listen, that's what they're all about. The bucket list is kind of like a combination of I really really hope to do it. You know, combined with fantasy land. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and who knows? As you get older, you meet more people. Things happen. You know, and who knows? You may uh, you may wind up crossing paths with somebody that can get you on to Augusta. <laughs> I personally have not crossed paths with that person yet. Well, hey, listen. And if they saw me take a swing, they'd probably throw me out of my ass. Yeah, well, listen, you and I have had a couple good swings together. We have. Yeah. We've had some fun. We've had some fun. I would be shaking in my boots if I was ever down there. Uh, teeing off at the first tee. Yeah, uh, at the first tee, yeah. That that would be a little bit. Um, that, that that would be. A That'd bit be intimidating. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> there, no doubt. Um, that would be fun, though, boy. All right, look, one more, one more. I'm going to combine the two. Okay. Well, give me a favorite movie, which is usually pretty simple, right? But also, if you could have been the lead role in any movie, oh. what movie would that be? Wow. Um, gosh, that's a really, really good one. I may have to have you come back to that. Um, any movie. I would have to go with one of my favorites, right? Um, man, this is... <laughs> <laughs> I like a lot of the sales genre movies, and it's Dude, again, no wrong, that's yeah. its own, right? I mean, um, you know, I, whatever I, you like, you like. <laughs> well, there's a couple guys. Well, number one, I have two favorite movies. Uh, one is Animal House. Gotta love Animal House. And, and, and by the way, the bar. yeah. Well, listen, I would tell you, but I probably watched it at too early of an age because I think it was made in like the late '70s, <laughs> yeah, early '80s, or whatever it was. So I didn't get half of like sure. the jokes and so probably a lot of them aren't uh, necessarily like appropriate today I haven't watched them in 10 years so I'm sure they probably would have got cancelled so don't hold it against me but Otter would have been a really good uh, guy you know fun role to play there he I, was funny yeah he was he was pretty funny uh, but uh, again and I, I would say um, you know Glenn Gary Glenn Ross for me you know, when I was first getting into sales was something that was, I mean, a lot of people would say Boiler Room or whatever. Dude, um, Al Borlum is yeah, so, a man possessed yeah, in that movie. Yeah. The good news is you're fired. Right? Like, what was it? Uh, first place gets, uh, you know, uh, El Dorado, Cadillac El Dorado. Second place, steak knives. Third place, you're fired. Right? <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be that guy. I don't think I would want to be any guy in that movie, to be honest. Me but they, I think oh, they all are just really sad. But um, no, that would be my other favorite movie, I would think. Good call, man. I like the answers. I like the answers. All right. This phone is driving me absolutely nuts here. Okay, let's see. What else have we got? Okay. Here's a, here's a rather simple one. Do you have a favorite um, booze or drink or beer or wine, it, any anything <clears throat> that you particularly uh, fancy? You know, it, it's changed over the years. I think that changes with everybody, right? It Certain does. stage. And I mean, like <clears throat> you know, Western Illinois University. I mean, it was any beer you can get your hands Natty on, Bo, right? Baby. Yeah, you got it, right? That you know, nat Natty Light. Um, <laughs> you know, so you know, it, it's. Uh, I would say, I enjoy. I, I don't do it a lot because um, you know. It's because brown brown liquor gives me a headache, but I love you know a, a good bourbon on the rocks, right? Big rock. I mean, listen, that's that's become a standard. Yeah, the big square or the big circle in the yeah, glass, yeah. Circle, square, whatever. Um, but and again, listen, that's that's pretty pedestrian these days because a lot of people like that. But I've learned you know to really appreciate that. Um, but uh, you know, I, I also like a, a vodka martini now and again. So yeah, it's all right. Very cool. Yeah. What, Very about, cool. what about you? What's your favorite? 
an off the charts, um, bold Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon, love. Yeah. And I'm not a, I mean, listen, you know me pretty well, they know me 11 years. I'm the opposite of snooty or uppity, yeah, right? I'm as, sure. you know, <laughs> I'm as meat and potatoes as you get. But um, when it comes to my food or it comes to something like that, like you said, as you've gotten a little bit older, you're a bit more selective, you know? I like a really, really nice Cabernet, and um, and and I I love a a, a good uh, vodka martini. Yeah, so so you and I understand. You know, it's so funny. I don't know if this says anything about me, but I don't, <laughs> when you ask me about drinks, um, my mind didn't even go to wine because I almost think it's a different category. Right? It is. Yeah, it one hundred percent is. <clears throat> I, I I do love a good Cabernet. The tenth question. I don't get to uh, make up the tenth question. The tenth question for you, Michael, is who are you going to interview? The next segment for your ten questions. Well, that is, um, this is a very important person to our company. I, I think uh, she doesn't get all the credit that she deserves just because she's behind the scenes, okay. right? We all give her credit. Everybody knows her here. She's a legend. Um, but there, one of the reasons I wanted to put her on camera is to show the world, you know, somebody who's been an intricate part of growing our business. That's a great idea, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've uh, I've asked uh, Mer Meredith uh, to come on board. She's our director uh, and vice president of marketing. That's awesome. And uh, one of the cool things about Meredith uh, was that she was one of the first hires at our company. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, she was one of the first <laughs> hires. And it was unique because even larger $100 million distributors or whomever didn't have even a marketing department. But we had like, what, five or six people. Yes, we did. And, and you know, uh, and that's what really helped shape us into a sales and marketing well, company. Well, she did an unbelievable job. Yeah. Still I mean, does. But, I mean, yeah, absolutely. she was solo for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So, she, she a lot of people um, outside our organization, unless they deal with her from an event standpoint sure. or marketing, some of our suppliers. But a lot of people don't understand, like, how important she has been in the growth I, I could not agree more. Yeah. As integral as integral gets, and uh, she has a fine team behind her now. Oh. And uh, uh, I got to tell you, Mike, this has been an absolute pleasure, man. It's been a lot of fun. This has I, been a blast. Uh, I look forward to hearing it once uh, once uh, it comes on out onto uh, LinkedIn, and look forward to seeing the interview with you and Meredith as well. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. And what I have to say too is everybody knows and it's, there's nobody who's been in front of the camera more than Chuck Scalassi has <laughs> at our company, and it's been some of our best ones. So when I heard that he was asking me to come on uh, board and being the one he's interrogating, I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything, Thank Mike. you, my it's friend. I appreciate it. And uh, Chris, that's a wrap.